What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel and welcome back to another video for you guys today. Before I start this video, I just want to say if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And also don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. I've basically been saying this every day, so it's probably drilled into you guys' heads. So if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, Chelsea 2 Wolves nil. We took the scenic route as per usual. It's the Chelsea way. But we are now in the top four and it has now been officially confirmed. It's been a huge dogfight over the last couple se over the last couple months. And I think we actually managed to top last season for the worst ever top four race in history. But we have crawled into the top four. Yes, Manchester United have jumped over us to third at the final few games of asking but who cares honestly we wanted top four from the start of the season a lot of us myself included weren't expecting us to get top four this season I thought it was going to be a much more dreadful season than it inevitably ended up being and I think Frank Lampard has done a great job anyway for the team so I'm not going to try and be negative about the fact that United have overtaken us but it is Chelsea 2, Wolves nil. This is five things we learnt. Wasn't the most entertaining game in terms of final day drama, but we didn't want anything entertaining. We knew a win would get us top four guaranteed. We knew a draw would get us top four guaranteed. We knew even a loss and a United win, which did happen, by the way. United beat Leicester as well, which would have meant that we got top four regardless of the results. So we were only going into this game knowing that the ball was in our court. And as soon as we got the game into a winning position, we just went to see it out. And let's just move straight into the five things now. The first thing I want to start with is in goal. Kepa or Caballero. Now, Caballero was preferred over, Cap over Kepa for the Chelsea Wolves game after another poor performance by Kepa against uh, Liverpool on Wednesday. And the one, the one reason why I'm adding this as a point is because... I don't want us to start overhyping Caballero or start saying he's brilliant like that. And I don't want to even come across as negative either. But I haven't seen Caballero get tested like that. This Wol this Wolves game, they barely had any threat going forward. As soon as we made it 2-0, we just sawed the game off, which is going to be another one of my points later on. But my point with Caballero is he's looked solid. But I haven't seen him save us recently. I mean, bar that, I think that Wolves game, the best chance we had was a cross that was coming in. And it looked like it was just going to dip into the bottom right-hand side. Bottom right-hand side. And Caballero did well to see that and anticipate it and save that. But bar that, he didn't really have much work to do against Wolves. Manchester United as well, he didn't have a lot of work to do in that game either. I thought, bar, I think one or two of the set pieces, they must have had like one or two shots on target in that game as well. And it was a very chelsea dominant dominated performance in that game as well. Uh, back in February when uh, Kepa had that period where he was thrown to the bench and Caballero was preferred, we didn't look any better or worse with Willy Caballero in goal and I'm saying Willy Caballero should still be starting the FA Cup final. Number one because he started all the games leading up to the final. Number two there's more confidence in him compared to the confidence in Kepa right now. The Liverpool game is a huge example of that. But I do want to see more from Caballero. I do want to see how he reacts to actually being tested more regularly. Because he was tested more regularly in that period in February where he was starting games. And we didn't look that much better. We didn't look that much worse. We were still conceding goals. We were still seeing games through. We had good performances as well. And there were some perform there were some games where Caballero was very unlucky not to get a clean sheet. One of those was the Tottenham game with the own goal. Another one was that United game as well. I'm happy he's got a clean sheet now against Wolves. But... I haven't really seen much from Caballero to say he should definitely be starting over Kepa. It's just right now it's like Kepa's bottom barrel and the only way is up. And that's why Caballero's been getting more game time. So my first point is Willy Caballero. Good performance, but I want to see how he does under pressure and under serious pressure. And I think we're going to find that out on Saturday in the FA Cup final. Second point. Something that also might become another factor in the FA Cup final. 3-4-3. Three, three, and it is a huge struggle to break down. Wolves played the same formation as us yesterday. They played the 3-4-3 three, three, same as us. And that's the reason why both sides were defensively solid. But both sides struggled to find a way through as well. That's another throwback to the Manchester United semi-final as well. When both teams played with three at the back and the two wing backs. And we both struggled to break down each other's side. We were the more dominant side in both games. That's coming on to another point when I talk about the Kovacic and Jorginho pivot. But we still struggled to break them down. And I thought, you got to give Wolves credit. 
because defensively they were solid. I thought their composure and their concentration was very strong. They doubled and triple teamed Pulisic whenever he had the ball and he struggled on, on Sunday. Nothing to do with his lack of quality in the game. I don't think he had anything like that. He just didn't have any room to breathe. And I think in the case of Christian Pulisic, he really does need to start getting used to playing those sorts of games and having two or three players on him at every single opportunity. It's the sort of thing that Eden Hazard had to get used to. And he'll get used to it in time. It, like Liverpool is more or less the same. He beat three players straight up to set up Tammy Abraham's goal. So you know the quality's there with him. It's just something he, he needs to get used to having to deal with on a more regular basis. But Wolves, Wolves were a real struggle to break down and it sounds like a bait Michael Owen commentary point me saying this but getting that first goal was key and it's the same thing with the Manchester United game as well. The, if both teams are playing the 3-4-3 it's more or less a question of who's going to crack first. Ch uh, against Wolves we were lucky that Alonso managed to draw that foul for Mason Mount's free kick and for Manchester United we were lucky that we were able to sneak that ball in for Olivier Giroud but we were the more dominant side on both, side, on both games anyway. So another big point of that is whoever has the most possession, whoever's the most dominant on the ball is the most likely to create those mistakes. Third point, second half game management from Chelsea, it was excellent and after we got those two goals just on the stroke of half time, we could have easily just sat back, tried to try to conserve energy for the FA Cup final and given the ball back to Wolves and tried to let them come at us. But we didn't do that. We controlled possession. We had 76% possession until the second half strength spray. We dominated control of the game and we just kept the ball and just held on to it and tried to frustrate Wolves for as many periods as possible. A lot of people are complaining about the sideways passes, lack of progression with the ball. And I kind of get that. You want to see more goals in the game, but... Chelsea only needed a draw in this game. Wolves only needed a draw in this game. As soon as we got the two goal lead, Wolves are the one that needs to come and collect something. We've come and we got what we need. And unless we concede three goals, we ain't going to be in a bad position. And we weren't going to concede three goals in that game. We played it very smart. We held on to the ball. We didn't try to do too much of it, but we maintained control of the ball. Because if you maintain control of the ball, nine times out of ten, you're maintaining control of the game as well. Wolves were very frustrated trying to deal with us in that match. And the second half, it might have been boring. It might have been a huge drag. But we just held on to the ball and we held on to control of the game. And from Wolves, there was no urgency to break us down. We closed them down in their first half, in their own half, whenever they tried to transition from defence into attack. And this also leads into my next point as well. Kovacic and Jorginho, this pivot is madness. And especially when, you, when you're in a winning position in a game, there's nothing worse you want to face than Kovacic and Jorginho. Jorginho didn't have the most aesthetically pleasing performance today, but he managed the game spectacularly. When I'm talking about those sideways passes or those passes that weren't very progressive, Jorginho was behind a lot of those, but it kept the ball in Chelsea's control. We weren't trying to progress the ball forward that much. If anything, Wolves' defence, like we said, was solid. It would have been pointless trying to continue to break them down when they're in a winning position and a comfortable winning position with a two-goal lead. If we can maintain control of the ball, maybe try and bring Wolves out a little bit more, which they started doing more towards the end of the game, and that's why we started getting more chances. And we were a bit unlucky not to get a third. Tammy Abraham had a good opportunity, which, to be honest, could have had a better finish. And there was a couple of other, other opportunities as well in the final few minutes of the game. But we were just seeing the game out throughout the second half. Jorginho, I thought, had a brilliant performance, but I will also say it was also overshadowed by how brilliant Mateo Kovacic was. He was my personal man of the match. I get Mason Mount also deserved man of the match, and it's an either or out the pair of them, but in my opinion, it was Kovacic. Kovacic controlled that entire midfield. He was impossible to get the ball off. The guy's ball carrying was so beautiful to watch. He made the most tackles during the match. And I think it was six tackles in that game and his recovery tackles and the ground that he covered throughout the entire match He looked like N'Golo Kante was still on the pitch and the guy if you sign to add those recovery tackles to his game And sign to add down a more regular basis this guy's getting more and more dominant And seriously I don't get why Bruno Fernandes is getting pushed to team of the season over Mateo Kovacic Because Mateo Kovacic has been around for the majority of the season and he hasn't had the stat pad penalties for the majority of this season either Plus he's been around for the entire season so I think it's a bit of a BS with Kovacic getting, getting ignored yet again But it is what it is, Kovacic had an excellent performance Final point I want to make 
is scoring after 45 minutes and we're making a huge habit of doing this and I think mentally it's so good for us to continue doing this because that is a huge sucker punch to the opposition. Wolves, I think Nuno's team talk, he would have been very calm going into that get going in at half time because the draw is all they needed to overtake Tottenham. But we got those two goals straight on the stroke of half time. And now the guy's going in. Everything he was going to talk about previously has been thrown out of the window. Manchester United as well. Goal just before the stroke of half time. Done, would have done a madness to them mentally. Watford as well. We got a goal back before half time. Liverpool as well. Olivier Giroud scored before half time. It's becoming a huge habit. And I'm hoping it's the same thing on Saturday for the FA Cup final. But guys, this has been your five things for the last Premier League game of the season. Chelsea 2, Wolves 0. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points I've made down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys throughout the week. We're going to have a lot of exciting content for you guys building up towards the FA Cup final. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Take care and up the Chelsea.